And I remember waking up, you know, I'd I'd had this feeling of a panic attack for a couple weeks, just on the verge. And I remember waking up one morning and the Lord said, hey, you're going to sing your way out of this today. And I was like, okay, how are we going to do that? You know, it's like, okay, Uh, that feels overwhelming, (laughs) you know. Totally. And, um, and, you know, the Lord just started speaking to me through the idea of the song. You know, I just started writing the song and um, was just at my house by myself, you know, but my family was there, but it was just me. Just, just kind of walking around my house that morning, processing everything with the Lord, and just well, I started writing this song, and and I, I remember just that morning, uh, watching as I'm writing it and as I'm getting these declarations of Scripture and of hope in Jesus, I, I literally was watching my heart turn from severe anxiety and fear and flipping it on its head to like tenacious joy and hope. Uh-huh. What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Honored to have you. You said you're in Shreveport, Louisiana right now. I am today. I'm on a tour with my wife and our friend Leland and Sean Curran. Uh, We're having a good time. Yeah, we're having a good time on this tour. Dude, that's a tour. Where are you guys headed and how much longer do you have? Uh, We're headed to Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, and uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. We have another like week, exactly a week left. Yeah. Nice. Big yeah. South tour. Yeah, big South tour. Yeah, the South yeah. tour. Uh, the South tours in August are, are interesting. You know, it's very hot. <laughs> Sticky. Um, and, and, uh, but, South, you know, every, everybody, everybody's fun all over the country. Everybody's different. Uh, but we're, we're, I'm from the South, you know, so it feels like home from Texas. Yeah, so. It's yeah, good. so you get it. I, uh, I've born and raised SoCal my whole life. So it's like humidity it. is, I, I cannot SoCal. handle it. No. Can't handle it. I, I can't either. Nashville and stayed. No, it's tough. It, I don't think anybody can handle it. I just think you get it. <laughs> and so I was in Nashville uh, last May or June, and I was there for a month, and it was just hu- it was just humid. Some days were good. Some days were really humid. And I asked my buddy, his name's Micah. He's this this he's from Georgia, big Southern accent. And I go, <laughs> I go, man, how do you how do you deal with this? And he goes, man, you just got to get used to being sad. And I was like. <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? He's like, sticky all day. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, that's so good, man. I, I, I liked it even before you explained it. Just straight up <laughs> sad is crazy. Sad, bro. <laughs> I know, and I was like, that's when I knew. I was like, okay, the, the West is where I stay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good for you. Uh, I'm jealous on the weather part for sure. <laughs> for sure, weather part for sure. Uh, where are you guys coming out this way anytime soon? You know, we were just there in March. Uh, on oh, we did nice. a tour with Martin Smith, uh, which was awesome. And uh, so we don't have any plans as of right now, no. But uh, but we love coming out there. So as soon as we can get back, we will. We will. Yeah, you guys got to come out, man. It's uh, yeah. the weather's about to get good in the fall. Yeah. It gets real nice. It gets yeah. a little hot right now, but it gets nice. Yeah, you can't say it's hot. No, I think nah. right now, I think it's. You don't have well, a pass. It's seventy four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You can't say it's hot. You, you are not allowed. <laughs> yeah. uh-uh. Nope. You can't say it's hot. That's not what you get. Meanwhile, there's like there's like humidity and like and like water dripping down your windows right now. In Louisiana. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> totally. Well, hey man, let's get let's get into this podcast. I really appreciate you coming on, man, taking time. Uh, I'm really excited for our combo today. You got a new album coming out August 25th, correct? Right. Yes, sir. Let's go. And uh, call Firm Foundation. I'm excited to talk about it a bit. Uh, here's what we'll do. We'll read a little scripture around our conversation. We're asking the question, what is my foundation? And then we'll just jump into this thing and have a good conversation. But before we do that, I have to bring this up. I got a little birdie who let me in on some info about you. <laughs> you can say true or false if you want. <laughs> you can let me know. You can deny if you want. But no. I heard that in high school, you were in a band with Tennessee Titans quarterback Ryan Tannehill <laughs> and were not the lead singer. True or false? Yeah, so it wasn't in high school. It was in fourth grade, <laughs> <laughs> which makes it everything about what so you said better. is true, but it was fourth grade. Oh, uh, yeah, me and Tannehill, we go way back. We were we were best friends. We, so we graduated from Big Spring High School 2007, same year, everything. 
But we, we met each other in first grade. We went to the same elementary school. And me and him, we rode home from school together every single day. My grandma picked us up. Oh, man. And, uh, and so we were, like, we were like inseparable friends really through first, first grade to about fifth grade. And then when he started playing sports and I started playing music, we kind of – we weren't like super, super, super joined at the hip anymore, but we have a lot of history. And yeah, fourth grade, we we entered the talent show. Third grade, he third grade he beat me in the spelling bee. He was first no. place, I was second place. Yep. And uh, we had a little, we had a little fight. We'll, we'll, he beat me in the fight too, so that's fine. <laughs> uh, but uh, but fourth grade, yeah, we he was the lead singer of our talent show band, and he was awful. He was he so was bad. Right, just, <laughs> the only thing he's probably bad at. Yeah, very he much. Could, so. He's got the clutch gene. He could beat you in. in That's in, uh, right. In the spelling bee, beat you in a fight. But I think you got him on the music. That's right. And I'm I'm a diehard Cowboys fan. Um, but but I do live in Nashville, and I love the Titans. And I, I you know ever since I've lived in Nashville, they've kind of been like my like my adopted team because they're just home, yeah. you know. And so when and that was before he was even on the team. So watching him come to my home my home city now and. And just really revive the the football program the way he has. Oh, for sure. Him getting a second chance. I mean, the whole story is beautiful, man. It's yeah, been, it's awesome. It's been fun. I I got I went to every game last last season. Watched it. No way. Yeah. So. Oh, dude, you're a Titans fan now. You yeah, can I say mean, it. not really, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's easy to jump ship when the Cowboys keep playing the way they've been that's playing. That's true. That's true. It's I just want it. I, I got enough room in my heart for for a, like a team and a half. So they're my yeah, half. team and a half for sure. They give me a half team. Yeah, yeah like they adopted team. <laughs> that's so funny i had to bring it up somebody told me i can reveal my source later but all right somebody told me I had to bring it up. but let's uh let's read this in the, this verse and then we'll pray matthew 7 24 through 27 which i'm guessing has some sort of correlation to this album says anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise this is jesus speaking like a person who builds a house on solid rock though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Yeah. And I'm really excited today, man, to just talk about what it means to have a foundation in Christ, what is uh, often our foundation in our life sometimes, and um, really talk about your album and kind of how that um, can be a tool for us to help build yeah. um, this idea of a foundation. But do you mind praying for us, man? And we'll just yeah. like, get First of all, I was just thinking how funny would it be if I was like, man, I've never heard that before, but that's so, <laughs> that supports my record so much. What was that? Yeah, you go, could, you send, could you send that to me? <laughs> could you, be huge. Can you send that to me? Was that in the yeah. Bible you read? That was, that was big, dude. That was really good. <laughs> wow. It's so perfect for my yeah, record. Dude, you go, they just, you go, per- that's profound. What book is that? <laughs> uh, sorry, I couldn't resist. Oh, okay, I, let me like, pray. I love Eugene Peterson, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jesus, thank you that you are the firm foundation. Thank you yes, that, um, that we can build our lives on you and you are solid. And uh, we live in a world where everything is shaky and everything is sinking sand. And it is very, very fearful to oftentimes look at the world we're living in and we're trying to cling to things that will hold us up. And we, we just want to talk about and highlight today that Jesus, you are the only thing that can hold us up. And, and, and when we build our lives on you, what's amazing is anything can come against us. And we are not going down. And so we just thank you for, we thank you that you are solid. We thank you that you are constant. We thank you that your goodness, it never fails. Your love never fails. Nothing could ever separate us from your love. We just take so much hope in you, King Jesus. And I pray that you're glorified. I pray that people are encouraged in this conversation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Fired up after that prayer, man. <laughs> you can tell someone's got a secret place, you know, about their prayer. I had, I had to put extra fire to make up for the scripture joke I made. Yeah, know? absolutely. You got to make sure people know, like, hey, this guy reads his Bible. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Just be careful. Uh, you know, man, uh, I'm excited about the album, bro. I, I, I got a chance to listen to it, and we were playing it all day in the studio. We've been here early awesome. filming a bunch of other episodes, but been just bumping it, man. It's been a blessing, it's been encouraging. Uh, one of those albums that just fires you up. You feel the presence of of Holy Spirit almost immediately. Mm. And awesome. I'm just I'm just eager to know what was the writing process like for this album, and where did this idea of like firm foundation come from? 
Yeah. Um, even with the single firm foundation, like I really want to know what was that like? Did that come out of a season? Did that come out of a, yeah. an idea? Was it a heart cry? Yeah. So firm foundation, I wrote it October, 2020. It was the first song that I wrote in the pandemic. So oh, I wow. didn't, I didn't write from March to October. I, I just, we had a lot of stuff. I had just released an album. The blessing was happening. Yeah. Um, and then oh, I was just honestly too stressed to write songs. <laughs> I was just processing a lot in my own heart as we all were. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but I remember October, 2020, I was really on the verge of a panic attack. That's really, that's kind of the, that was the peak of pandemic oh, wow. stress for me was October of that year mm-hmm. and just everything had compounded. And, um, and I remember waking up, you know, I I'd, I'd had this feeling of a panic attack for a couple of weeks, just on the verge. And I remember waking up one morning and the Lord said, Hey, you're going to sing your way out of this today. And I was wow. like, okay, how are we going to do that? You know, it's <laughs> yeah, like, okay. Yeah. Uh, this, that feels overwhelming, <laughs> you know, totally. and, um, and, you know, the Lord just started speaking to me through the idea of the song, you know, I just started writing the song and, um, was just at my house by myself, you know, but my family was there, but it was just me just, just kind of walking around my house that morning, processing everything with the Lord. And just, well, I started writing the song and, and I, I remember just that morning, uh, watching as I'm writing it and as I'm getting these declarations of scripture and of hope in Jesus, I, I literally was watching my heart turn from severe anxiety and fear and flipping it on its head to like tenacious joy and hope, you know? And I, I even if you listen to the voice memo, you know, as a songwriter, you're always got, you're, you got your voice memo app on and you're just pushing record and you're just, you're just kind of uh, creative vomiting, you know, for lack of a, a yep. better term. And if you listen to that voice memo, you can I, you can hear me get to the idea that he won't idea, and yeah. I literally start like chuckling to myself. And I, I love when I go back and listen to that. I, I, I feel like I can literally hear what God said. Like I sung my way out of it. I can literally wow. hear it go from like, oh, all right, like God's not going to fail. You know, no. like he he's he just he won't. You know, and there was just this yeah. tenacious. This tenacious faith and joy, and my circumstance did not change, but my faith did, and my hope did, and um, you know, and then yeah, very you know, after getting that idea, very much, very quickly, it was like, oh, the Matthew seven. That's that's the scripture. That's the scripture that this song, you know, that this idea connects to, and um, and I, I, you know, so it was a it was a few months later that I ended up sitting down with Chandler and my friend Austin, and I uh, basically said, hey, I've got this idea. And, um, you know, and that day I was like, I, I feel like Matt, I read this Matthew seven scripture. I was like, we've got to, we've got to work this in this, in the song somehow. Um, and it was just a couple hours in that Chandler just started playing piano and <laughs> Dying came when blue my oh, built on you. you know, he just started singing that with that melody and it was just like, yes, that's, yeah, that's it, it. You know? that's it. Um, and yeah, so, you know, that, that was, that was the song specifically. I mean, all the songs, um, all the songs, all the rest of the songs for Firm Foundation, I think I'm saying this right. Uh, I'm pretty sure every song for Firm Foundation and every song for my last album, God is Good, because the albums are connected. I recorded them, uh, I recorded them 24 hours apart. So. Oh, no way. So last July, last (laughs) July 7th, I recorded Firm Foundation live and then we flipped everything, and the next night, July eighth, I recorded "God Is Good" live. So and you did so, recorded like fifteen songs, just twenty, 20 songs, songs, twenty songs. That's yeah. Crazy. So, so yeah. So I we even know the lyrics to twenty songs. Uh, well, a confidence monitor helps us. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. But um, but yeah, we we did basically did these two albums all at the same time. You know, we we you know, uh, and and I knew that I would release one and then release the second one. So. Really, these albums are very connected. They're all written in in eighteen. All the songs are written in these eighteen months. Really, from Firm Foundation, October twenty twenty, you know, to about you know May of twenty twenty two is is yeah. basically all the songs then. And so, it, it is just written from this place. And and as well as the pandemic, I also lost my dad in the oh, beginning man, so of twenty twenty two. So January twenty two. Uh, I lost my dad very tragically, very sudden. Just um, there's a there's a whole complex story with it that I won't get into, but it's the hardest moment of my life, hardest grieving, hardest you know, just everything. Um, and so there, really, a lot of these these songs are written from these this pretty rich soil in my heart of really yeah. having to 
having to, my heart was having to, had to be tilled and there's just deep well of presence of God in my life because of the hard things that I was walking through and just the ways that I saw God pull me on the, to the other side of it and all of that. It's like, so these songs really, I, the, the kind of, the, we coined the phrase, you know, on this Firm Foundation album, certain hope in uncertain times. And that really is, you know, just the theme of all of it. It's just like, there is this certain hope uh, of Jesus in whatever time. And and the times, you know, I believe, sorry to say, I think they're only going to get more uncertain. I think that's just, yeah. that's how the story is written. That if you look, read yeah. Revelation, that's that's how the story is written. Just, just read the Bible. It's pretty cool. You know, so it's like, yeah. well, I can choose to freak out. And I don't really like that. It's uncomfortable. I'm not excited mm-hmm. about that. But at the same time, I know that um, that that if you have if I have my life built on Jesus, um, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it through, and um, I'm going to have hope when people don't. And that mm-hmm. probably is that you know I think that's kind of the point is to the way that we preach Jesus in these crazy seasons is that we have hope and we have peace that don't make any sense to anybody else. And it's like, yep. well, what is that? It's like, well, it's the love of Jesus, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's so good, man. I love. It. I think. Listening to the album, I think it's interesting that you talk about like, the place that you came out of because I think listening to the album, like you really can f- feel that like raw, uh, like almost like soul cry in like some of these songs. Like even like uh, I plead the blood. There's mm-hmm. a line I think you say like my shelter and my shield mm-hmm. is like the blood. Yeah. Like you only say that when you need shelter and covering. <laughs> like those like those That's things right. just come out of those times when you're just like, man, I just need. Jesus, I just need to cry. And I know I told you this like <coughs> off off camera and off off recording, but I, at Yona, man, we've seen like when that bridge comes in, like rain came, wind blew, mm. but my house was built on you. We see something shift in the room. And mm. like we see young adults um, connect with that song because these are young adults and these are people that are literally walking through rain. They're walking through wind they're anxious, they're depressed, they yeah. have loss, they lure, they went through trauma and pain and they're mm. hurting and they need hope and they're coming into this room and they're like, hey, I just need Jesus. And then to hear an anthem that just preaches to them and says, listen, the rain came mm. and the wind blew, but if you could build your house on Jesus, you're yeah. gonna be okay. Yeah, that's right. That like, that's like medicine. Like yeah. that's like, that is like, that is like neosporin for your heart. Like to hear like, <laughs> soothing for your soul to yeah. be able to start to sing that over yourself yeah even to sing it over yourself until you actually believe it yeah like sing it until okay. you're going rain came wind blew but my house was built on you even though yeah. you know your house has been built on success your house has been built on yeah. instagram followers your house yeah. has been built on the promise of so and so and the and the hope of the promotion and the good grades mm-hmm. in school and the your and in the spouse and the kid your house has been built on that you know that yeah. If you can just begin to declare and get behind, no, I think my life needs to be built on the rock, yeah. the cornerstone. I think my life needs to be built on Jesus. Yeah. Then that that uh, that peace that you talked about, it shifts because that anthem almost allows you to choose your faith over your doubt. It allows you yeah. to like pick, what am I going to live out of? Am I going to live out of faith or am I going to live out of this idea that stuff around me is crumbling, my foundation is crumbling? Yeah. And you realize that you get to choose. Like You get yeah. to have the, the power to say, I cling to Jesus. Like, yeah. When there's other straws I could grasp at, when there's other things that I, that the world promises me are gonna make me feel better, I can cling to Jesus. Like yeah. I can cling to the hope of Jesus. I can cling to the cross. I can plead the blood. I can yeah. believe. I can walk in authority. It's just power, man. There's just yeah. power in in this album, and I just yeah, I just want to honor you for that. Come man. on, great. bro. I agree with everything you said. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I think it, and to just to see it firsthand, like I'm sitting, uh, the way we like do Yonas yep. we're like kind of in like a semi-circle i'm sitting i can yeah. see everybody worshiping yeah and i can see the effect of what they're worshiping as they're Amazing. sitting and starting to believe it so it's powerful man it is powerful can you speak i don't, I don't want to like dig i don't want to dig too much and if you don't want to, you don't want to talk <laughs> about any of this you don't have yeah, to but all good walking through that time when you when you were saying like i felt like a panic attack was intimate like mm-hmm. it was on its way yeah what what was that like and how did you find yourself coming out of that? I think that that would be a really powerful thing maybe to speak to to some of our listeners. I know there's a lot of listeners right now struggling with anxiety or mm-hmm. having a bad week or things are starting to to boil. You know, there may mm-hmm. have been loss of a loved one like you walked through or something hard they're walking through, just anxiety rearing its ugly head. Like, mm-hmm. What is your encouragement to that person 
that you experienced in that season? Yeah. Um, maybe even like by making Jesus your foundation. Or yeah. What that was like for you. Well, I, I've I've found that anxiety and fear in my life is a byproduct of what I'm meditating on, and you know, meditation is like it's like this new agey word now and it's like ooh, yeah. meditation it's like new age people did not create meditation the bible says to meditate on the word of god like yeah come on and you Tell know them. what i've learned is like if you're if you're really good at worrying you're really good at meditating because what are you doing when you're worrying you're going uh you're playing out scenarios in your mind that often aren't real they are projected future outcomes of something bad happening right that's what worry is bro that's a that's a word. So that is a word. And for me, it's like that's that's what was leading me to that. It was we're in this pandemic, and what happens if I can if I if I can't work and I can't make money in my family? And it's like, what if I lose my house? And what if I do this? And what, what if I don't have food to eat? What if people you know? What if people come and try to take me out of my house? And it's like, what? I mean, goodness, you know. Yeah. And and now that the reality is was none of that stuff. Yes, it was hard, and yes, it was tense. But what has the last three years of the world been? It's just been projected outcomes of what could happen yeah. and us believing that they're so true. And so I'm meditating on that, right? Now, yeah. if I meditate on the word of God, basically, our, our, my friend Leland, who I'm on a tour with right now, he says, in, in, your, in your contemplative moments of your day, we all, have, we all have the same ones. When I wake up in the morning, when I'm traveling, when I lie down at night, you know, those, those moments when I'm I'm con- contemplative i'm i'm thinking you, you know um i don't have the distractions what am i doing in those moments i need to be i need to be being intentional to meditate on the word of god and and, and what is the what is the scripture what is the scripture for the fear that i'm experiencing so what is the opposite mm. faith declaration for whatever i'm afraid of you see even jesus yeah. in the desert in the wilderness he gets tempted with a a fear or a you know a worry or a something that can stress him out, what does he do? He declares the opposite, the the faith declaration from the word of what fights that temptation yeah. or that fear. And so basically, like yeah. I've got to be meditating on the word of God. I've got to find the promise for whatever I'm facing right now. What is the promise of God that that is the opposite of that? And in those contemplative moments of my day, I'm, I'm meditating on that. I'm declaring it. I'm memorizing it. There's so much power in the living, the living, active, you know, word of God. And so, you know, Friend Foundation for me was that. It was this, it was this, I'm afraid that, I'm afraid that I am going to go under. I'm afraid that there is nothing to cling to, that there is nothing to stand on, that, that, um, and so what was the opposite declaration? Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaking, I've never been more glad I put my faith in Jesus because he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't, you know? And so it was like, yeah, that's on. what I was meditating on. I was, I was kind of forced to meditate on it because I'm a songwriter and God just chose to give me a song that day, but it was, he was speaking to me through it, you know? And so that, that really is it. It's just, you're already really good at meditating. Let's meditate on the truth and that, that gives us faith and that gives us hope. Yeah, that, that uh, really reminds me of Romans 12, 2, uh, one of my favorite verses. And it says, be transformed um, by the renewal of your mind. And I think a lot yep. of the time we think that this renewal of our mind is this magical, accidental phenomenon that happens when <laughs> we meet Jesus. And I mm-hmm. think the reality is I think that the renewal of the mind is you have to learn how to do that with Holy Spirit. And uh, mm-hmm. I love what you're talking about with meditation, because often yeah. what we're meditating on is uh, programming our mind. And if we're able to meditate on the things of Jesus, we're able to renew the way we think in different ways. Um, yeah. And like you said, we can renew our way and convince ourselves into believing almost this anthem over our lives, kind of like you did with Firm Foundation, like sing it till you believe mm-hmm. it, you know, like and, and kind of yeah. renew, allow the Holy Spirit to renew your mind until you really believe it and you're able to like walk in those truths. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of, uh, my, one of my favorite verses, Mark nine, 23, Jesus says, uh, a man like brings his son to Jesus to be healed. And he says, uh, Lord, if you can help us. And Jesus says, mm-hmm. if I can, 
all things are possible <laughs> for one who believes. And the man says, mm -hmm. I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Mm, and I love so that good. from the, the, that, that man, because that's kind of how you renew your mind. You go, mm. Lord, I, I do believe that you're, that you are the Prince of peace and that you give us peace beyond understanding, mm -hmm. but help me overcome this anxiety. Like, Lord, I, I yeah. do believe that you have hope for my life and that you are the promise of my heart and, and that you have healing for me, but help me overcome the reality of this pain. And I think like yeah. learning how to talk to God like that and talk to Jesus, you can you start to see miracles. Like what happens after the man says, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. God goes, Jesus goes, well, then let me do a miracle in front of you to help encourage yeah. your faith. You know, let me show up in a way that encourages your faith. Let me show up in a way that gives you peace. Let me show up in a yeah. way that, that heals. And, and I think it's really powerful, man, because I think there's a lot and a, and a lot of people that are in that that spot you know they're going yeah. lord i do believe but i'm just going through it right now you know like yeah and matt are joking around because this week has for our team has just been like up and down and left and right bro if it could go wrong it's gone wrong so when you we just nobody knows that but we just had some technical di technical difficulties but like when that cut out we just started laughing we were like <laughs> it's just the week. It's just what has been happening. I don't know. I think there's a breakthrough next week. I don't know, but there's. It's no, just been no. a week, man. And we've just like, our team has just been like, we're gonna just decide to choose faith. Like, yeah. we're just gonna decide that no matter what we walk through, that God's good. You know, like we're just gonna decide yeah. that like this is what we stand on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff went to the 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 crapper. You know, like yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, God's good. You know, yeah. God's faithful. Yep. And like we get to choose, just like the man who said, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Both can yeah. be present at once, but we get to choose which one we want to walk in. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, there's There's been times in my life where I've thought that I had to have it all together, that I thought I, I'm, I'm more mature than this and I should be, basically I should be stronger and I should, basically I should have, I should have less needs at this point, yeah. you know? And what I realize is that, no, actually, God created us to be needy. That's what. That's how we are designed. We are designed to need Him. Uh, and if I'm being needy, then I'm being actually exactly who I'm supposed to be. Oh, that's good. And there's never, there's never this moment of arrival as a Christian when you arrive to the point where, like, you've got it all together and you're strong and you don't have fear and you don't have worry and you're not working through those things— um, because we're designed to go, God, I can't do this. I need you. Yeah. God, I do. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I do believe help my unbelief. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I do believe that you are who you say you are with all my heart. Um, uh, but I need you to help me, you know, and God designed us ultimately his number one design. If you go back to the garden of Eden, what is his number one design? His number one design is relationship with us. Yep. His number one, number one design is communion and friendship and nearness and daily walking with him. And so imagine if God wouldn't have designed us with, to be needy, what would we do? We would, which we often still try to do as humans, and that's why we get ourselves in trouble. But what would we do? We would create our own uh, plan for our lives, and we would go on, and we would build our massive structures, and we would say, I don't need God because I've got it all figured out. And like, yeah, that's what, that's what we still do a lot. But that's yeah. why we're so empty when we do that. But that's what we would do. We would go, thank you, God, for making me so strong in my own self, and uh, my, you know, uh, and I'm going to go do this. And then what happens? We, we do not commune with God at that point. And so God designed us he designed us to break. He designed us to come back and go, God, I need you. I need you. I need you daily. Every hour I need you. You know, that old beautiful hymn. It's like, well, yeah, that's how we're designed. So we can't think that there's some arrival where we get to this ultimate enlightenment, you know, moment where it's like, oh, I'm fully, fully strong. It's like, no, if I actually recognize daily, hourly, minute by minute, I need God and I'm okay with that. And I actually accept the fact that that's how I'm created. And, and I realize that the fruit of that is going to be communion with God, consistent communion with the person who created me. And that's the ultimate goal. Then I settle in to having those needs. I settle in to, to going, God, I need you. Yeah. I need you. I'm nothing without you. 
And I think that is the, when you reach that, that that is the goal to reach. <laughs> the goal to reach is to have nothing in my own strength, but to have everything in my weakness. God's strength is made perfect. Um, you know, that's what we're trying to get to yep. as, as Christians. And it's a journey. Salvation's, salvation happens in a moment, thank God, but sanctification takes a lifetime. Absolutely. It's a journey that we're walking with Jesus. Yep. And, um, and that's the whole point. That's how he designed it. Yeah. Because he wants to just be with you. He just wants to talk with you today. Yeah. He just wants to, he, he wants to be the one to rescue and help and Come save on. and speak and restore and bring freedom and so call out to him and give him call out to him in your deepest anger and your frustrations ask him all the hard questions you know the enemy wants you to run from god thinking that you have to bring him something perfect it's like no that's the that's the that's the lie you bring him bring him all of those ugly dirty filthy things you know i love what you're saying because you know it's when we've heard this before but the end of ourself is often the beginning of of our relationship with God and our, the walking in the fullness with Jesus is like kind of when is when we die and then can step into fullness and, and new life with him. And the idea that we have to come to Jesus with everything figured out, everything perfect, everything together is is religious is what it is. And I think a, a relationship, a real relationship says, come to me with concerns, come to me with, with struggles, come to me with trials, come to me with pain. Like that's relationship. Like um, real relationship doesn't shy away and in true love and, 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 um, and love that's, that's a choice doesn't shy away from people when they're in pain, people when they need to a shoulder to cry on people when they're frustrated they're a real relationship open to those conversations a healthy marriage which is often what we can look at to see our relationship between us and jesus says like hey i'm open talk to me when you're in pain talk to me when you're hurting talk to me when you have concerns talk to me when you need my help like I, i'm open i'm willing and i want to be a part of this like this is why I created you. And I loved your point, like the whole idea of like the garden was original intent was communion with the father, was communion with, with God and to walk closely and intimately with him. It was, it was to know him and to be known by him. Um, it was to, to be in relationship, even down to the point where he's like, hey, go ahead and name the animals. Go ahead and was in relationship with him. It was to operate in our authority that he had given us. And it was never meant to even be work necessarily for him but to be work with him and you know we often like we get in these areas we're like oh, i'm just gonna work my way for him you know i'm just gonna and, and i think he's like hey i want to be in all this you know like i want to i want to join all of this stuff that you're in i want to be a part of all of these things so last question for you man just uh we'll let you go what if there was one thing that you wanted this album to get across you wanted a message to communicate you wanted something from this album to inspire somebody that was listening what would that be you know, I think um, really just with these two albums, like I said, they're connected. God is good and firm foundation. Uh, you know, they were both written out of uh, really a couple of the hardest, you know, moments of my life. Hardest, you could even call it a season because it lasted a little while. And um, you know, these are these are twenty songs written over eighteen months of just really some rich soil of have my heart having to get tilled up and God really planting new seeds and watering it in a new way. And, and, you know, uh, I mentioned it a little bit at the beginning, but, um, you know, I lost my dad beginning of 2022. And, um, you know, in that I, 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 that, first of all, that was the hardest moment of grief, hardest few weeks of grief or that I'd ever experienced in my life. Darkest moment, just, it was a tragic loss, a sudden loss. Um, and I remember also recognizing and realizing that it was also the richest presence of God that I'd ever experienced in my life. Mm. So I recognized like the, the, the contrast of being in the hardest moment and also feeling God the closest. <laughs> and wow. uh, I remember, you know, six weeks after my dad passed, I sat down to write for the first time. And the song I wrote was good. Uh, Can't be anything else off the last record. And it really became the theme of the whole album. And the reason that that song just kind of came out that day is because my heart was just so grateful for God being so close in my hardest moment. 
And I, I just, I wanted to tell God how good he was. And also what I've learned about that song now that I've led it for a year and um, God's still speaking to me through it. I, what I've realized is that um, declaring the goodness of God, declaring the praises of God, which would be like a song like Bless God on this Firm Foundation record or Firm Foundation too. I mean, you could kind of make the argument for all the songs, honestly. But declaring the nature of God and the truth of God, regardless of a circumstance, one, he doesn't ever change. So it's consistent. His truth is consistent. It is always true. His goodness is always, he's always good. Yeah. And when you declare that, actually what it does for your soul is it helps you not to set up camp in those those hard places. Because sometimes we can do that. We can set up camp. And praise actually helps us pass through it. And so I think what my heart for this album would be is that it would, it, it, I pray that it's songs. And these songs are really just declarations of scripture. So I pray that it's just melodies to these scriptures that help people declare these truths, these promises that help people praise, that help people uh, uh, praise their way through whatever they're, whatever they're facing, whatever they're going through, whatever you're going through. I hope it just gives you language to, to, to praise your way through and so that you would not set up camp in those valleys uh, because it's so good for the soul. It's so good to declare. A lot of times we believe the lie that we, we should praise God only when things are good. It's actually. Yeah. And um, so I just pray that this album helps give people some of those songs to do that with. I love that, bro. I love I love what you said. I loved a couple of things you said. I loved the the idea that the the praise helps you move past that camp you've set. I think that's a really powerful thing you just said. And then I also loved how you said um, when you were at your lowest, you felt God the closest. Yeah. It's Psalm 34, 18. Like God is close to the brokenhearted. Yeah. Um, and I think what's really powerful about this record, about this album really is that you were writing, like you said, out of a place in your heart that was a sad, tough broken season mm. and you're seeing this in rooms and it's connecting with people who may be in the same exact spot and in the same exact season and the power in that i think is there's the power and the vulnerability is empower how holy spirit speaks through you but also you said it yourself you're singing out scripture mm. like you're singing the word of god over these situations like you're singing you're ple literally pleading the blood over yeah. these situations like you're literally tasting and seeing that he's good through his <laughs> word over these situations like you're yeah. literally experiencing the closeness of the holy spirit like the dove yeah like in in those moments you know it's like you can go on and on and on because it, the most powerful thing in the world is scripture yeah sharper than any two-edged sword mm -hmm. cuts bone and marrow mm -hmm. separates soul and spirit mm -hmm. like if you put those in words over melodies and sing them with the power of the holy spirit there's a reason it's touching people in in their lives and it's mm -hmm. impacting people in rooms and Really powerful, man. So I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for coming on. I got one last question for you. Yeah, go for it. What is your favorite uh, song on the album? Oh, it's so hard. I really, I, I, I really believe in all of them. Like they're all, yeah. I mean, I wrote 30 plus songs in this 18 month season, you know, that were, that were for me. I wrote other songs for other people too, but like, 30 plus songs that went into this collection of possible songs and I getting it down to 24 was really hard and getting yeah. 24 down to 20 was painful. <laughs> what was that process like? Um, Did you just sit in a room with friends and like, and your team and go, Hey, which ones are hitting, which ones are not? It's, it's all by myself. It's, oh really? Yeah. It's just me. It's me listening through songs and really listening to my heart, listening wow. to, what is my heart really leaping at? What what is what do I feel the presence of God on? Like what yeah. is me? Um, yes, yeah, so I came in very much with like my vision to my team. Like here are the songs. Here's what I'm gonna do. And obviously, I you know they they speak into things at that point, and that's beautiful. And I need that collaboration at that point. But I, sure. I like to preserve like what I feel as an artist, as the person carrying these songs. You know, where just. God, like, what, what are you, what are you speaking to my heart and how, what, what are we supposed to, you know, what am I supposed to do? And, yeah. and, and, and even artistically and creatively, what am I excited about? What do I, what do I feel like is a great song? What do I, what do I feel proud of, you know? And yeah. 
Have you ever had a song that you like decided not to put on an album that the Lord like brought back to your attention later and you released it and it was like just went crazy? That hasn't quite happened yet. I have had some songs recently that I didn't think were very good that I was a part of writing <laughs> that that got released and now I, they're I think they're amazing and I, I you know I love them and and yeah. that definitely can happen and that is the, that is the beautiful part about collaboration, especially with other artists is you can write something and you cannot be super connected to it as an artist, but you can help as a songwriter because I kind of wear those two different hats. Yeah. As a songwriter, you can help somebody write it and they're super connected to it. And 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 that's okay. It doesn't mean it's a bad song if I'm not connected. It just means I wasn't supposed to be. And um, sure. and I actually love that process of, of someone else, some, another artist in the room taking it and, and, and getting behind it because they believe in it and just... Yeah life you know and then sometimes there's multiple artists in the room that love the song and that's why that's when you see those collaborations and that's a beautiful thing as well you know um but yeah songs are songs will surprise you a lot of times and uh yeah, that's crazy the best thing to do is just is just get it get in a room of people and lead them you know it's, that's like the first thing i do when i write a song i think is i think i love is i lead it at church yeah. and kind of see what happens and sometimes songs get changed after that they get tweaked um and and then sometimes you lead it and it just goes off and you're like, okay, wow, this is, yeah, this is special, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's like, it's like being a comedian. You gotta like try it in front of everybody and see if it hits. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, okay. You didn't answer the question though. I, could, I interrupted you. I really couldn't pick a favorite though. I honestly couldn't just because I could tell you, I could tell you the, the encounter with Jesus on every song. I could tell you the scripture. I could tell you, you know, just, um, just all the, all the ways that they're different and how they represent. Yeah different facet of God and they represent a different promise of God and all those things. So man, I, I'm really proud of just the collection. I'm, I really am. There's no, there's no B sides in my heart. On yeah. Come on. Album. Well, one of those days, one of these days when we have more time, I'd love to hear some more stories about those encounters and yeah. And how, what God was teaching him, man. Cause I think that yeah, songwriting is special and then getting to like release it and what God does in it, especially songwriting is special, but songwriting for Jesus is even more special. I think Yeah, hundred percent the Claire's name. Hey bro. Uh, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah. Um, and mean, thanks for fighting for this episode, man. <laughs> <laughs> we made it happen. We made we it. We did it. I appreciate that you squeezing it in over a couple of days with your busy schedule, man. It means the world for real. Yeah. Appreciate hey, let the let the listeners listeners know how they can get connected with you if you're going to be on tour soon, album, yeah. where they can follow yeah. you. Yeah. Just, uh, I'm just at Cody Carnes on all the social media things. Uh, I think TikTok's the only different one. Maybe Cody Carnes official or something like that. You'll find me. You'll see it. Uh, just like, but, but just search it. And then, um, yeah. As far as touring goes, honestly, we're we're gonna be in Europe. I don't know if you have any European listeners, uh, but <laughs> the rest the rest of our year we're in Europe uh, for the fall, and then we're brewing some you know some very interesting things for next year. But uh, I don't have any information on those yet. So, uh, but yeah, but. Go check out the album and follow along, and we'll definitely uh, let you know when we're coming near you. Let's go. All his links will be below. Album comes out August 25th. Uh, I'm stoked for it. I'm not going to lie to listeners. I've heard it, and it's good. <laughs> we gave you that. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Uh, God bless you. Praying for you. Believe in that uh, this next season is going to be special. Europe's going to be sick. going to be awesome. What in the world? going to be awesome. Um, but hey, listeners, y'all have a great rest of your week. We love you. Yep. See ya.